I'm allowed to call him that because he's a billionaire and I'm in the bottom rungs of society. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. Ugh! Disgusting! I can't, I can't even handle it. I don't even want to hear about it. I'm sorry. If they've done that, and that's terrible. I don't even want to hear about it. I'm so fucking disgusted. Really. I'm so fucking sick of it. All these fucking rapists. What is wrong with anybody to do that? I don't fucking hear about it. Molested, assaulted. The hell, man. Why did I don't understand why anybody would want to rape anybody ever without their consent, let alone fucking children. I can't handle it, man. I can't even. I don't even want to think about it. Ah, uh, makes me sick. All right, let's go somewhere better. Let's read about, uh, let's see if that article is still up. Here's some important information. Oh, it's on Mozilla Firefox, I believe. We're gonna read an article. I'm about to read myself an article. Yo. Let's see if I can find it on Mozilla fucking Firefox. How do I make an old shit? Firefox. Sorry, I hate that word now. People are using that word, starting to piss me off. It's like every other word. Um, okay. This is the New England Journal of Medicine. Otherwise known as www.nejm.org. The New England Journal of Medicine. Editor's note. This editorial was published on February 28, 2020 at NEJM.org. COVID-19! Navigating the Uncharted. Anthony S. Fauci, MD. H. Clifford Lane, MD. And Robert R. Redfield, MD. March 26, 2020. And there is a Chinese translation if you wish for one. 12 references, 14 citing articles. Article. The latest threat to the global health is the ongoing outbreak of the respiratory disease that was recently given the name coronavirus disease 2019 in parentheses COVID-19. The Coronamod Hype 19 was recognized in December of 2019. It was rapidly shown to be caused by a novel coronavirus that is structurally related to the virus that causes severe acute respiratory syndrome also known as SARS, S-A-R-S. I did not know that's what SARS stands for. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Wow. As in two preceding instances of emergence of coronavirus disease in the past 18 years, SARS, 2002 and 2003, and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, M-E-R-S, 2012 to the present, the COVID-19 outbreak has posed critical challenges for the public health, research, and medical communities. In their journal article, Lee and colleagues provided detailed clinical and epidemiological, excuse me, epidemiologic, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that word correctly, epi, epidemiologic description of the first 425 cases reported in the epicenter of the outbreak, colon, the city of Wuhan, in Hubei province, China. Although this information is critical in informing the appropriate response to this outbreak, as the authors point out, the study faces the limitation associated with reporting in real time the evolution of an emerging pathogen in its earliest stages. Nonetheless, a degree of clarity is emerging from this report. The median age of the patients was 59 years old with higher morbidity and mortality among the elderly and among those with coexisting conditions, similar to the situation with influenza. 56% of the patients were male. Of note, there were no cases in children younger than 15 years of age. Either children are less likely to become infected, which would have important epidemiologic implications, or their symptoms were so mild that their infection escaped detection, which has implications for the size of the denominator of total community infections. On the basis of a case definition requiring a diagnosis of pneumonia, the currently reported case fatality rate is approximately 2%. In another article in the journal, Guan et al. 
Report mortality of 1.4% among 1,099 patients with laboratory confirmed COVID-19. These patients had a wide spectrum of disease severity. If one assumes that the number of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic cases is several times as high as the number of reported cases, the case fatality rate may be considerably less than 1%. This suggests that the overall clinical consequences of COVID-19 may ultimately be more akin to those of a severe seasonal influenza, that of which has a case fatality rate of approximately 0.1%, or a pandemic influenza, similar to those in 1957 and 1968, rather than a disease similar to even SARS or MERS which have had case fatality rates of 9-10% and 36% respectively. Huh. Well, so far it sounds like this is like nothing, this COVID-19. A 0.1% mortality rate? As opposed to 9-10% to from MERS or SARS to 36% respectively? Uh. The efficiency of transmission for any respiratory virus has important implications for containment and mitigation strategies. The current study indicates an estimated basic reproduction number of 2.2, which means that, on average, each infected person spreads the infection to an additional two persons. As the authors note, until this number falls below 1.0, it is likely that the outbreak will continue to spread. Uh-oh! Uh-oh, some people are going to get a flu and 0.1% of them are going to die. Uh-oh. Everybody panic now. Recent reports of high teeters of virus in the oral pharynx. That sounds like some kind of Egyptian thing. Early in the course of disease aroused concern about increased infectivity during the period of minimal symptoms. China, the United States, and several other countries have instituted temporary restrictions on travel with an eye towards slowing the spread of this new disease within China and throughout the rest of the world. The United States has seen a dramatic reduction in the number of travelers from China, especially from Hubei province. At least on a temporary basis, such restrictions may have helped slow the spread of the virus whereas 78,191 laboratory-confirmed cases had been identified in China as of February, 2000, or February 26, 2020. A total of 2,918 cases had been confirmed in 37 other countries or territories. As of February 26, 2020, there had been 14 cases detected in the United States involving travel to China or close contact with travelers, three cases among U.S. citizens, repatriated from China, and 42 cases among U.S. passengers repatriated from a cruise ship where the infection had spread. However, given the efficiency of transmission as indicated in the current report, we should be prepared for the COVID-19 to gain a foothold throughout the world, including in the United States. Uh oh, just like the flu. <laughs> Community spread in the United States could require a shift from containment to mitigation strategies such as social distancing in order to reduce transmission. Such strategies could include isolating ill persons, including voluntary isolation at home, school closures, and telecommuting where possible. Don't forget about internet censorship. You gotta have your internet censorship so they can't talk to each other on the internet. A robust research effort is currently underway to develop a vaccine against COVID-19. We anticipate that the first candidates will enter Phase 1 trials by early spring. Good luck! Therapy currently consists of supportive care, while a variety of investigational approaches are being explored. Among these are the antiviral medication Lopinavir, Ritonavir, Interferon 1B, uh, or some Greek character. The RNA polymerase inhibitor, Remdesivir, Chloroquine, and a variety of traditional Chinese medicine products. Once available, intravenous hyperimmune globulin from recovered persons and monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies may be attractive candidates to study in early intervention. 
critical to moving the field forward even in the context of an outbreak is ensuring that investigational products are evaluated in scientifically and ethically sound studies. Make sure they're also very pedantic sound studies. Make sure you make those words as difficult to pronounce and recognize and memorize as possible. So that only those with the esoteric knowledge who are able to masturbate to this shit for fucking eight years in college are gonna understand anything about it. And the rest of the public is gonna go, Um, uh, I better take the expert's word for it. Whoa, sounds way over my head. Every outbreak provides an opportunity to gain important information some of which is associated with a limited window of opportunity. And by that they mean collect everyone's data and their response to this bullshit. For example, Lee et al. a report, a mean interval of 9.1 to 12.5 days between the onset of illness and hospitalization. Unnecessary hospitalization, I might add, in many cases. But that's just my opinion. Don't take my word for it, because I don't have any MD. I masturbated to regular porn instead of fucking college medical textbooks. I'm not judging anyone for getting off on that shit, but you know. This finding of a- but, but don't, don't use your esoteric knowledge to try to manipulate gullible people. This finding of a delay in the progression to serious disease may be telling us- Oh, serious disease, right? <laughs> you guys are too funny. Let's get serious here. <laughs> Oh god, uh, this finding of a delay in the progression to SERIOUS DISEASE may be telling us something important about the pathogenesis of this new virus and may provide a unique window of opportunity for intervention. Uh, uh, achieving a better understanding of the uh, pathogenesis of this disease will be of invaluable to navigating our responses to this uncharted arena. Furthermore, Genomic studies could delineate host factors that predispose persons to acquisition of infected infection and disease progression. The Karanamod outbreak is a stark reminder of the ongoing challenge of emerging and re-emerging infectious pathogens and the need for constant surveillance. Oh yeah, there you go. Prompt diagnosis and robust research to understand the basic biology of these new organisms and our susceptibilities to them, as well as to develop effective countermeasures. How much, how much shit does this guy smoke? <laughs> you know, he's probably sober and lucid all through college and then he just smokes tons of weed and writes these shitty articles. These people. Yeah, practice makes perfect. Mm, yeah. And there's all the sources and everything. God, this is the most retarded time in human history, I swear to God. I didn't think people were going to be this retarded. In the fucking stores. Okay, well. Yeah. Piranha mod. <laughs>